fight night at the Forum continues. For the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World, 12 rounds deciding the bout. Again reminding you, we will have three judges at ringside who will score the bout. The referee will conduct the bout. This is a presentation of Jerry Buss and Don King Promotions, sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission and Commissioner Jerry Nathanson of the Athletic Commission here at ringside. The officials appointed, judging at ringside and scoring the bout from England, John Coyle. John Coyle. Rudy Ortega of Las Dimas Hernandez of Venezuela. A judging at ringside. Dr. James Jenkin of Los Angeles will be judging at ringside. The referee to give instructions after the introductions will be from Las Vegas, Carlos Padilla. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the man responsible with Jerry Buss for this great promotion tonight, the one and only Don King. Don King. Super Featherweight Championship of the World, recognized by WBC, introducing the challenger on my right, out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with a blue trim, hailing from Bakersfield, California. This is his fourth try at a world's title. He weighs an even and trim 130 pounds. A fine record, 38 knockouts in his 64 wins. 64 bouts, 38 by knockout. The record actually is 64, 4, and 2. He is the WBC number one super featherweight, and he is the challenger tonight at 130, Ruben Castillo. Now, ladies and gentlemen, really needing no introduction, he is a champion of the world. White trunks with a green trim. On my left, from Culiacan, Sinaloa, and Mexico. He weighs in at 129 and one half pounds. Just imagine 39 knockouts in his 43 wins. He remains undefeated. Here, the WBC defending champion, the super featherweight champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio Cesar Chavez. Carlos Padilla giving instructions. Okay, you're going to box for 12 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kinds of power. Don't throw any punches during the break. Is that understood? Who's the chief seconds? Okay, seconds come out fighting. Let's take a look now and see how they match up. Julio Chavez, five years younger at 22. The height about the same, five, seven, five, six and a half. The weight almost equal, 129 and a half to 130. The reach, Castillo by an inch. But he gives away five years to the baby-faced Chavez. Round number one for the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. It's a 12-rounder. Both men in white trunks. The green and red stripe identifying those of Chavez. The dark blue stripe, of course, Castillo. Castillo's fourth attempt to gain a championship. The 
Young Chavez got his title October 84, knocking out Mario Martinez in the eighth round. I'm Chick Hearn along with Tex Cobb. We're ringside at the fabulous forum. Just as anxious for this one to start to unfurl as you are. Across this round is the fifth of championship. Both of these guys have got to find out what's going to work against the other opponent. Both of these guys have definitely got to see what kind of angles they can attack efficiently against this kind of fighter. One thing is for sure, they are both in excellent condition. There's not an ounce of fat on either. Their bellies are as flat as a washboard. I wish you would bring that up, Chip. <laughs> Chavez, the 22-year-old champion, is single. Ruben Castillo is married to the beautiful Rita, and they have a daughter, Misty Marie. You'd have to search long and far to find this kind of a record that I'm going to give you. Between them, they've had 113 professional fights. And out of the 113, between them, they've scored 77 knockouts. Next. Well, I'll tell you what, neither one of these guys in here, because they came breaking edge. Both of these guys can war, and both of them punch like a new kicks. Right now, Ruben seems to be the more busy fighter. Certainly trying to keep this Chavez off balance. Because, uh, again, incredible punching power of this youngster. We refer to Castillo being 27, the youngster 22. What's the um, the top age for a, a, a good fight? Well, it's it's a certainly good depends. combination by Castillo. Excellent. It certainly depends upon the fighter, number one. But number two is the fact that in a lot of weight divisions, they seem to be able to burn out much quicker, much younger. They burn out younger. Very much so. Uh, for whatever reason, fat boys seem to last longer. All right, good round. Both boys scoring at the end of it. We'll go over and take a look, first of all, at Julio Cesar Chavez, the champion, from Culiacan, C-U-L-I-A-C-A-N, Mexico. He weighed 129 and a half today. There are 10 children in his family. He was the fourth one born. He is very short when it comes to speaking English. However, that's what he's doing these days, is studying the English language. He counters very well. He's a devastating puncher. And uh, Tex Cobb likes to refer to technique, and I think it's a marvelous word. Each of these lads display lots of it. Superb technique. They do not throw sloppy punches. These guys do not have lackadaisical attitudes okay. toward their execution of basics. Both of them are excellent. Both of them are crisp, hard, fast punches. Looking at Chavez, Chavez has been called by many boxing aficionados, quote, one of boxing greats. There's a beautiful right hand by Chavez, the first really outstanding punch of the fight. The referee is Carlos Padilla from Las Vegas, Nevada. The judges, Dimas Armandes, John Coyle, and Rudy Ortega. The referee does not vote. We use the California 10 must system. Now here is a very important factor to remember. For this fight, the three knockdown rule has been waived. The man can be knocked down more than three times if the referee doesn't stop him. That's in this fight. I'm telling you right now, this guy Chavez can punch. I mean really punch. And what, what uh, Ruben is doing is trying to counter his attack. He lets that guy get those big punches off and tries to come right back as he did just then. But he's got to keep maintaining that good jab, that good motion to keep this guy off balance. He throws a tremendous right hand after that left jab does Chavez. Experience 
counts. This is the 71st. Oh, a good left hand by Chavez. Another left by Chavez. Chavez dominating here in this round, but a good combination thrown by Castillo, the challenger. There's an old cliche, but maybe we can throw it in. They came to fight. I'm telling you what, these boys come to war. That might have been low. Yep, it was low. There is no penalty. The referee has not indicated any penalty, but Castillo is bending over his own. Did some damage. Well, don't act like it didn't hurt, darling. I mean, you know, right. they don't wear those protectors because they're tough down there. Excellent structure. Both these guys execute very valid, extremely quick oh. technique. Fifteen seconds left in round two, scheduled for twelve. Right now, Ruben Castillo did an excellent job to, to finish with a tremendous fur in the last of that round. At the end of the round, as he walked away, Chavez turned after absorbing a couple of punches from Castillo and literally sneered at him. As though you hit me with your best and it didn't do any good. And Castillo from Bakersfield, California said, wait till round three. Now, the low blow, we didn't think there was any doubt about it. In fact, we called it before any indication came from the referee. Yeah, that's what they call south of the border there. Chavez is very good with the combinations, as you said, looking to counter his Castile. Sometimes you pay too dear a price, though, when you wait to counter. Round number three, here we go. Third man in the ring is the veteran Carlos Padilla, one of the game's best. Brought in by Jerry Buss and Don King for this bout. This is only one of two championship fights we've got for you tonight. And I don't mean the county championships or state championships. I'm talking about WBC World Championships. Well, I don't know what WBC, WBA, whatever kind of initials they use, these boys are intergalactic fans. Castillo just got over the right hand of Chavez. Good combination. Very good combination by Castillo, and he receipts for a right hand from Chavez. Now they're pulling out the arsenal. They are war. There's no possible way, is there, that one of these guys won't go down? I don't see how they're going to be any prisoners took anywhere anytime. These guys don't look like they're, they're doing anything but trying to kill each other. Chavez has had 39 knockouts in his unblemished 43 victories. There's a beautiful exchange over there. 38 knockouts have been scored by Castillo. He's in the white trunks trimmed in the dark blue. Mm. I'm telling you right now, the counter punching is going on by Ruben in there, along with a tremendous offense by Chavez. <laughs> Boys and girls, this is real entertainment. Words from our expert, Hex Cobb. Beautiful jab and a great left hook by Castillo on the counter. What a counter punch. The timing of these individuals is pretty phenomenal because both these guys are executing at warp speed. And when you have those kind of fast hands, the ability to the counter results an enormous amount of precision timing yourself. Time, the way these guys are toe-to-toe, -to -toe, darling, this is hard work. It's only the third round. We're 
scheduled for 12. No, no, we're scheduled for 12. These guys talk is not bigger than 12 rounds. They really would have to buy what you just said. The referee doing a remarkable job with word command. He doesn't step in and handle the fighters very often. Good and miss. Obey him explicitly. Chopping right hand by Castillo. A left hand by Castillo. He receipts for Chavez's left hand. I think Castillo was hurt. ovation from this crowd and justifiably so Tex. I'm telling you these guys right here have ex exhibited such tremendous powers such tremendous consistency in their punching and their multiplicity of anchor attacks. I am very impressed. Well in almost every exchange in that round both men tallied the judging must be very difficult. I'm telling you right now, you have to flip a coin for my money. Because I wouldn't want to wake up either one of those bodies tomorrow. The two styles are very complimentary for the boxing fan. One shows off the other one, doesn't it? Both these guys are going to war. That's what's showing up so well here. Both styles are very talented and very, very efficient. Chavez rushed across the ring this time. I think that he thought two that Castillo might have been shaken a little bit at the end of the third round. Well, it's certainly something to hope for. crowd is it's unquestioned and unswerving loyalty. As quick as you're bleeding, Bubba, your history. Right above us now, Castillo in the corner walks out of there. A good left hand by Chavez. Good body, Jeff. Those things hurt. appears to be marked yet, although there might be a trace of blood, just a trace coming from the nostrils of Chavez. I can tell you one thing. I don't know why in the world these guys aren't cut to ribbons. Or you can tell they're not white. Excellent. Very good timing on the part of Ruben Castillo. Punches. Good counter punch by Castillo after two good leads left and right by Chavez. We're in the final minute of round number four. Nice timing on that straight right hand. Right hand lead by Chavez. Beautiful fake with the left and then crossing with the right hand. Chavez scoring. Yeah. Do we have some blood around the left eye? I think so. I think there's a cut on Castillo around the left eye. I'm afraid it's above the eye. Castillo says, come on in. If it's above the eye, they can stop the fight if it bleeds into the eyeball. They haven't turned yet, so we can see it. Definitely a cut. <laughs> the exact location we will not guess. We'll try to get into the corner. There's Castillo. The oh, no, cut is in the eyebrow. Do you see it? Yeah. A it's cut a in the very eyebrow. bad cut. And it's in a very bad place because from no, there no, it no, can no, bleed no, into the no, eye, no, restricting vision, 
and very often causing the stoppage of a fight. Now, tremendous pressure will be applied to the man there. He is putting pressure on it as hard as he can. He might even have a coin under that piece of the gauze. One of the things that nobody ever comments on intelligently is about how much fun it is to let some real live bad boy bust your face open and go in the corner and have some guy supposed to be your friend take this cut and squeeze it as hard as he can. That's what he does, isn't it? Well, that's part of what he does. The rest of what he does is add all kind of coagulants in one form or another, trying to keep his stuff from bleeding in the eye. Well, he's got it patched now, but Chavez will try to undo that. Five, long way to go on this 12-rounder. I'm impressed with the third man in the ring, Carlos Padilla. You don't even see him in your picture. That's how good he is. But he's always there when needed. Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure. These guys don't need much help nope. in getting it down to it because these boys are ready to, ready to rumble. High left hand right on the ear of Castillo. I'll tell you something that has not been noted very often is Cesar Chavez's ability to dodge punches. He hits so hard, it's really easy to concentrate on his offense. But this guy demonstrated some tremendous evasive maneuverability in his last round. I think it's interesting to watch him shake his shoulders. He does a lot of fainting with his shoulders. Good fainting, good motion, yep. hard to hit. Here in the fifth round, you know darn well, like we do, that Ruben Castillo is very, very much aware of that cut. Norm Lockwood, his cut man, appears to have done an excellent job. That was not on the cut. It was on the bottom of the chin. The cut is in the left eyebrow. Those jabs are bouncing off that face are moving through enough, enough pressure to break that thing open. By Ruben Castillo. Combination. Right, left. That shot came very close to the cut. Those jabs. Castillo fighting back now. A lot of redness around the eye, but there does not seem to be any swelling from the cut that's above the eye and the brow. We're in the final minute of round five. Excellent. Chavez measuring. Castillo countering. You joined this late. Castillo's got the dark blue stripes on his white coat. And if you joined this late, I'm sorry because you missed a lot. I'm telling you right now. But be sure you don't miss our other world championship tonight. Super Bantamweight. Mesa against Ayala. That cut is bottom. 20 seconds. Sure it is. What you'll see Ruben do to make adjustments to that kind of vision requirement is to step over to his right more and more as the fight goes on. Because what he's got to do is square up to be able to see efficiently because he can't, otherwise he can't see that right hand angle. A beautiful right hand. Uh-oh, he's bleeding more severely now. Right at the end of the round. He got a couple of shots, and he is bleeding more severely. We're looking into the corner now of the champion, Cesar Chavez. Never mind no water or nothing. Hold still. We got to worry about this. Now Castillo, and again the pressure, just as hard as they can push it. And usually they will put a coin and push it under the cloth, or some object that will not give, like even the softness of your thumb gives just a little bit. And the man applying over there is Norm Lockwood. You gotta get mean. You gotta get mean, Holmes. They really uh, doing some good uh, work in these exchanges. Would you look at the way these guys are firing? Now here's a guy bloody and battered and raising a ruckus right there. And Caesar has continued to keep consistently applying the pressure, consistently raising a real ruckus, throwing very, very hard punches. Dr. Bernhard Schwartz is in attendance ringside, has not been summoned yet. We're going to round six. I'm very impressed with Norm Lockwood's job on that cut. That's a tough cut in a bad place. That's kind of an easy target, isn't it? Well, you've got to remember, with the left side being where it is, 
nearly, nearly 70 to 80 percent of the punches occur on that side of the face. Now it's really bothering Castillo. You'll watch him every now and then take his left hand and knock at his eye, trying to knock any blood away that might drip into the eye. It is directly over the eye, the cut. It's in as bad a place as you can possibly have a cut yep. for this game. That right hand that chopped a little bit might have cut it. That was the idea. That's why I threw it, Bubba. Because it's exactly what he's trying to do. It's when they went to the corner of Chavez at the outs at the end of the round, you saw some blood on Chavez. It was not his. Right above us now, Castillo fighting for his life in his fourth title attempt. The closest he came was in February 83 when he lost a 12-rounder down in San Juan for the WBC feather title. He lost to Juan Laporte. <coughs> Relentless pressure applied by the champion. And great counting by Ruben Castillo. A very entertaining fight. This kid Chavez just doesn't quit coming, does he? He's throwing, he's throwing. I don't know what his count is, but his number of execution of punches this round has been phenomenal. We commented at the outset on the excellent condition of both men and uh, no clearer proof could we have than this. Dead above us, two inches apart, raising a ruckus, nose to nose, and living some very serious PSI in there, boys and girls. Hey, they're liable to dirty up your tuxedo. I'm telling you what, they're liable to run right into the owls where the blood flowing here. We let man want to fight. And look, look at these guys more. The referee, Carlos Padilla, peeking in to take a look at that eye. Man, Tom, look at this. I don't know how many punches they've thrown, but they're getting into the hundreds, I would think. Yep. Castillo is game as they come. Chavez is talented as they come. And Castillo is out on his feet, I think. No. He's hanging on. He's down. Chavez and still the disappointed challenger after one of the gamest exhibitions you'll ever see, Ruben Castillo. And you can be sure to put it down in your diary that much of his demise was caused by that fight suffered three rounds back. I'm telling you right now, that's as fine an example of courage in the ring as an incredible example of execution of a man in trouble, a tremendous finish to a fantastic fight. I'm very, very impressed. In the rope action above us here a few minutes ago, some of the most fierce action that we witness ringside. You don't need a commentary on it. All you need is to watch. You can almost hear them thud off of each other's bodies, chins, foreheads, ears, bellies, wherever they want to land. Now another angle. Look at the game, young man Castillo, but right here, he is out on his feet and he'll try to hang on and there's just no more hanging on. He gave it every shot that he had near the end and found that he was just simply overmatched by this 22-year-old fireball from Julia Can, Mexico. At 22 years of age, he makes his first title defense a great one. Two minutes and 53 <laughs> seconds of the sixth round. Let's take one more look at the knockdown. The consistency with which this guy continues to throw those very hard punches is the kind of thing that's just too, too, too tough to possibly try to stand up to after this kind of pace. And Tex, I think you'll appreciate this. He tried to get up. He tried to get back on his feet and just simply couldn't. I think we'll go now to our ring announcer and to have the official confirmation of the 253 in the sixth round. The championship belt will be awarded. Naturally, a bitterly disappointed Ruben Castillo. He's been in training for literally three months for this fight. Oh, 
the WBC Super Featherweight Championship belt. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time in round number six. Two minutes, 56 seconds, scoring a win by knockout. Julio, still a champion, Cesar Chavez. We will have a presentation in the ring. The president of the WBC, Mr. Jose Suleiman, with Art Lurie of Las Vegas Supervisor. There is the championship belt. Will you turn the new champion, new and still champion around? Julio Cesar Chavez.